Hey, what's up guys? So, I want to talk about uh, something very important in this video, and that is being broke in the winter, i.e. <laughs> the Canadian economy, or Northern American economy, and I'm not even like that far north, man, I'm in Southern Quebec, and we have a pretty mild winter this season, but it still sucks and I'll explain why later but yeah um if you do seasonal work you know you have your own business uh, look I heard it even in the states I heard even in places like Florida and stuff like the tree work like slows down in the winter and you know a lot of a lot of the channels that I watch the ARB guys they do work in the winter where they live in places where there's no snow but they they even they don't do as much now like where I live like there's virtually no tree work to do in the winter like you could I would I have I'm willing to but it's not something that people consider and I'm not talking about like and again you know like wrongfully when people think tree work they think like aesthetical pruning and stuff like that and I think it's completely gratuitous to have like an arborist come to your house in the middle of the winter and like make your round out your hedges you know but that's not what the fuck I do <laughs> you know and like it's sad because branches will fall down and they'll break on houses and customers will literally wait until the fucking summer to like have it taken away or have it dealt with because they think that like it can't be done in the winter so I have to explain to people that it can now yes aesthetic trimming and stuff like that like rounding out hedges but I don't do hedges fuck hedges uh, been there done that now my philosophy is to leave the garbage for the garbage men so that's uh, again that's another video entirely on why I don't don't do hedges so yeah I, I'm equipped to do them but not in the way that I want really and not in a way look it, it's it, it is profitable but it, it's it's a dangerous road to go down and it's nowhere near as dangerous as tree work but hedges well I guess like tree work but you know equipment definitely makes the job easier and I get a lot of really hard hedge jobs that the hedge guys deny but the customers think that I'm gonna give them like a good deal and they try to lowball me and like they're hard jobs you know it's like 30 foot tall hedges and they want them like squared off and everything like it, it just sucks man and it's near a swimming pool so you, you can't like put a ladder up it's and near power lines I get all that stuff so yeah I don't fucking do it like call someone else fuck and it sucks too like cuz for, for the hedge guys they they go like they're mainly landscapers really and if you're a hedge guy watching this and like you get offended by this well whatever fuck you <laughs> but and they um, they get a customer and they go back and they cut their grass usually and they do all their fucking trimmings and they convince them that they need them to go back like once a week or every two weeks so they get a customer once and basically they get them like all summer all season and they pick and choose their customers yeah, that's it. and they get all the easy jobs and they don't take any new customers and they don't work all winter because they make enough money and they don't work too hard yeah great great setup sure. Um, if I could do that, I would, but I can't, not yet anyway, so I don't. So to those guys, yeah, fuck you, I'm not making your already easy job easier. You know, um, I fucking work hard enough, so yeah, that's why I don't do fucking hedges. But uh, back to my point, people assume that tree work means like, you know, aesthetic, like useless fucking gratuitous fucking winter pruning, and it doesn't. It's like fucking storm damage or takedowns. You know, I've had this, I've had customers last winter where the city they had a diseased tree and then the city ordered them to get rid of it you know within like fucking one week or whatever and they called us and we did it and it took fucking 10 minutes to take it down and we made seventeen hundred dollars i think and it took less than a day and it took a fucking it took an afternoon and we just went there with a pickup truck like no trailer or anything like we went back with a trailer the next day i believe to get the wood uh yeah it was great yeah fucking great and awesome we need more jobs like that so we sell firewood in the winter because last year we didn't last year we we were set up look my fucking chain is dull right now yeah fucking embarrassed of this 
but anyway I made a lot of mistakes this day and I was trying to figure out what was going wrong so that's why I'm kind of talking over the footage even though stuff happened so last year we were set up to sell firewood we moved out of province we moved an hour away and before we moved like I'll make another video about that but before we moved we took all our firewood well no not all of it we made um, four trailer loads full of firewood like full 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 of firewood uh, like it cost a lot of money also like all in all it cost us like 500 bucks in gas and like just to do the move which was an hour away it's not even that far and uh, but that's what it was you know and we had all our firewood set up in a pile there was a massive fucking pile and it was the size of like a bungalow you know <laughs> a single story house but the fucking bum that we were renting from he never fucking cleared any of his fucking snow on his property and he was a fucking welfare bum in the fucking winter and all he did all winter was stay home and fucking stare at his fucking fish and he was waiting for we had to shovel the driveway all the time fuck the uphill driveway we even had to shovel his girlfriend out and we had to shovel ourselves every time we needed to get out and he had a snowblower but he never ran it you know all he did was get up 15 minutes before his work and then fucking get in his like 4x4 and like drive through the fucking snow to work and like his answer was to tell me to get a 4x4 it's like yo fuck you man you're the fucking landlord do your fucking job otherwise I'm not fucking paying you to fucking live here and that's what we told him but despite that we still ended up fucking shoveling ourselves out and his dumb bitch fucking girlfriend that would just get in her car started and try to fucking drive out the fucking driveway you know, and she'd park front first, and the driveway was uphill going to the road, so she had to back out. And sometimes it would be like two feet of snow, so she'd get up like five minutes before work, try to start her car, try to back up through the snow, and she couldn't fucking make it. And me, me and Mark would go out walking all over, and like, this guy would be like helping her, and like, it's like, sometimes we even fucking helped too. But it was, it was so not fucking worth it, because they never fucking helped us once, so this guy fucking didn't... Sh clear any of his snow because he was waiting to get like a snow removal company to do it for free and the next door neighbor even let him use his tractor but he couldn't be bothered to do it so he got this other guy like a friend of his dad or something like that to come with a giant tractor and clear all his driveway and like all his back property he had 23 acres by the way and we were our wood pile was set up in the back out of the way and he told them to fucking dump all the snow on top of the fucking firewood so there was a fucking pile of snow the size of a house on top of our fucking already house sized pile of firewood and well it really fucked us up because we couldn't get to any of our fucking firewood and we got a few jobs last winter actually surprisingly you know we probably grossed around um i don't know not that much but in the winter months we probably grossed like around ten thousand dollars which again it's better than than nothing you know and if if your rent is a thousand dollars a month then that pays for rent for a few months and pays for some other stuff but we got those jobs like sporadically and they weren't you know the timing wasn't good they were far away uh, they cost us a lot because we didn't get any jobs where we moved and we all our jobs were you know where we used to live and we had to drag all the wood back home and like we had to drive for two hours to every estimate you know just to do a fucking free estimate so you know you better fucking get the estimate if you don't it sucks and one week i did 10 estimates fuck and i fucking didn't get a single one you know and it sucks man but that's part of it so this winter we got set up to sell firewood and everything like that and we've been selling some but we didn't set ourselves up early enough should have set ourselves up like in the summer you know, and I only put my ad up for firewood, like, in uh, December, right before Christmas. So I've sold probably around 15 cords so far, which is not a shitload. You know, I made maybe uh, $150 per cord, so we made just over $2,000. It's really not a lot, and it didn't even, like, pay for rent or anything like that because I had so many other expenses to fucking, you know, take care of. And, um... Sorry, my dog just got surgery yesterday. He got a, he got like a mass removed. It was like a, a cyst kind of in his armpit that got aggravated. And he was just scratching. So poor little guy. He was at the vet yesterday. 
and he got stitches. So now he's taking it easy. And, um, yeah, I'm just making sure that he's, he doesn't aggravate it too much. So, yeah, this year we set ourselves up to sell firewood. We sold around 15 cords so far, and uh, it was pretty good, but there's a lull. You know, and also this winter is kind of mild, so not only does it suck for tree work, but it sucks for firewood because people are fucking smug, like I said in a couple of videos back, and they think that, oh, it's warm, they're not going to need fucking firewood. So, but my competitors are all out. They've been out for a long time, and all the big hardware stores are selling half a face cord for $120 plus $20 delivery. And I sell a full face cord for $150 plus $20 delivery. So my prices are almost half of what they should be. And yet people still lowball me. But I advertise on Kijiji, which is basically, well, it's owned by eBay, but it's like a step above Craigslist. Or below, depending on how you want to look at it. But I get tired of these fucking lowballing bargain hunters, so... You know, when times are really slow, especially if you're willing to work, and you know, you have you have the means and you're, again, you're willing. We want to work in the winter, but let's say in our pond, the fish aren't, just aren't biting. And you know, it's, we advertise on Kijiji because it's free, obviously, and it's easy. And we tried other free advertising, like Facebook and fucking uh, Virage Sale, like Instagram. And there are, there are paid ways to fucking advertise on these things too, but I don't want to fucking pay for any of that shit. I don't have money for that shit right now. And if I'm going to pay for advertising, I want to make sure there are going to be results. So, you know, um, I was looking into SEO with the Yellow Pages and with Google and with some private companies. And they build a website for you and they do all this shit for you. But, like, even what they guarantee, even if they put you in the fucking top 10 search results, like on Google, which costs a lot, man. You have to pay, like, fucking a couple of hundred dollars a month to do that. Like, even, even if you do that, like, they said that their top customers only get, like, one call a day from Google. Like, despite how many clicks they get, which is bullshit, because in the busy season, I get more than one call a day from my fucking shitty Kijiji advertising. So, I've looked up SEO in the summer and how to do it, and, you know, it's basically, you know, if you can do a YouTube channel, and if you know, like, about keywords and hashtags, like, that's basically what website building is. So since the summer, you know, I've been working on a website and I built it in the summer, but I never had enough money to put it online. So, you know, it was tough and, you know, it wasn't perfect and there were some bugs, but I fixed the bugs. So that's like really, I'm really proud of myself for having fixed those bugs, but it was ready to go. And I knew that if I could just find out how to do that, especially if I didn't have the money, but I had time because, you know, if the phone's not ringing, anything I can do to prepare for business is good. You know, because even if it doesn't give me money today, it's going to give me money in the long run. So I figured out that I could do this myself. But unfortunately, on any of the website builders that you use pretty much, if you want to use these features and if you want to have your own domain name, like you have to pay money. So I didn't have any of this. So the website just lay dormant. So fast forward to now, we have this fucked up winter where the fish aren't biting for tree work and the fish aren't biting for firewood. Not yet anyway, but I still have firewood, I'm still pillaging and I'm always going to have it and prices are going up and you know, even if I don't sell it all this season, I'm going to have it for next season and it's going to be extra fucking dry and you know, even I can sell it in the summer for cheap and reward people for buying it at a good easy time to deliver. Or, if people don't fucking buy it in the summer, I'll sell it next winter, but I'll advertise earlier than this season. And I'll keep my ads up, because the longer you keep your ad up, the more fucking priority and traction it gets. So, I'll sell it next season for even more expensive, and I'll have the fucking demand for it. So, you know, you, uh, short-term pain for long-term gain. And I think that that's, a, um, a big problem with, I'll call it, like, Western capitalism. Because people are so caught up in making a quick buck. And they're so used to the instant gratification of getting paid every day no matter what. No matter what, no matter what kind of job they do. You know, they're so fucking self-important that they just want to show up and get paid. Actually, they want to get paid for not even showing up. So that's how entitled they are. So they can't fathom that, like, you start a business and you don't fucking make money every single fucking day for everything you do. And they say that they could never do that, you know, because they need money again. Because they're so important or they're accustomed to such a high standard of living what have you 
uh, or they're so skillful that they're in demand. But what they don't understand is that they're putting their faith in someone else, and the other person in which they're putting their faith, like, way down the fucking road, you know, uh, flashback to however far back you need to go, someone who found, someone founded their company that they're working for, and that person was just like you. And that person was putting aside all his fucking immediate needs of gratification and wants and creature comforts and pay and food and rent and social life was you know whoever started their company put all that shit aside just like you're doing you know laying everything on the line knowing that one day it's going to fucking work you know even if it's not today like rome was not built in a day okay and that this is where the japanese have us beat that's why i love fucking toyota okay like because they make a good product and they plan for the future and they actually produce lean also it's not just more 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 you know it's lean it it's 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 fucking very intelligent and they provide a quality product that's based on fucking good customer fucking feedback and good customer loyalty not planned obsolescence now as of like 2020 it's all gone downhill cuz they've adopted a more western model but you know the used toyotas like you can't fucking get any better than that so that's kind of my business plan also i'm not in it to make a quick buck today you know and fly by night and like rip, rip people off and do whatever it takes just to get paid today like i said in a couple of videos ago if i wanted to do that then i would do uber or something like that but that would limit all my time and that would guarantee a return but it would be a very 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 small return the return on this guys like is huge you just have to weather the storm. And what I like about firewood is it, yeah, with my dull chain right now. So it's work right now, but even though it's work, I don't consider it work. It's fucking easy, man. Yeah, you lug around heavy shit, but it's really easy. And compared to like tree work, it's a fucking walk in the park. It's fucking easy, man. Like I said, I don't consider it work. Even splitting it with the axe, even when the axe won't go through, even when I'm swinging it like 50 fucking times to break the same piece, I don't consider it work. It's fun and it's easy and again it's not it's not dangerous it's not scary i love tree work i love 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 climbing and i love fucking doing like complex fucking dangerous technical shit i love it it's fucking amazing it's fun like it's not like yeah okay sometimes i get scared a little bit but it's not really scary like you get so wrapped up in it that it's like that's the game fuck you know it's it's just like right now i'm using a chainsaw i'm not like scared of it you know like, I'm trying to figure out actually why it's not cutting properly. And this day I changed, like, several chains. And I wanted to find out why I sharpened them wrong. Because once I hit the ground and a couple of times I sharpened them wrong. So I was trying to find out what I did wrong. And I actually took... I didn't take the rakers down far enough. So that was my fucking mistake. So I remedied all that. So that's the other point, you know, of why I always fucking watch my footage and, like, try to upload it. Because I've tried to review my work. And especially on this day, I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. So I needed to find out. And, you know, Mark was there. My dad was there. I was there. We were all trying to spot and figure it out. But then we have the third person. Well, you know, it's first person footage. But we also have third person footage too. In case there's something that the three of us missed. And, you know, there was. There's something that none of us saw that day. And that's that the rakers were not taken down. You know, we saw that later on at night when we looked at all of my chains. So, you know, learned something. It was a good day. So... You know, if if you want to succeed, you have to be willing, you know, to starve a little bit in the meantime. And it's like a fight, right? It's like being a, a professional fighter. You know, it's like you're, you're boxing, okay? This isn't even getting knocked down. This is just, it, it it's flowing. It's not even rolling with the punches. It's sometimes you throw punches and sometimes you fucking dodge punches. And sometimes you block and sometimes you get hit. You're not always effortlessly throwing a knockout punch that never gets you out of breath and that gets you a billion dollars each time you fucking throw it. Like, come on, guys. You know, it, it can't be like that. And this is the equivalent of, like... This is like if you rent an apartment and you're tired of fucking renting an apartment and you have no money. Or you have, like, $30 left. And you're like, you know, I realize that I can take this $30... And like invest and buy like a five dollar fucking tool 
a five dollar handsaw and I'm gonna use that five dollar handsaw to start a business cutting trees just doing easy jobs and when I have enough revenue from those easy jobs I'm gonna buy a you know a slightly bigger chainsaw and when I have enough revenue from that I'm gonna buy a climbing saw and I'm not gonna pay my rent in my apartment anymore I'm gonna go live in the woods and when I have enough money you know from little jobs living in my tent then I'm gonna buy building supplies and build my own house and I'm gonna live in my own house as I build it and if I do it in the summer you know and if I save everything I just might be able to fucking do it and now the odds are not with you if you do this but this is what it's like to start a business and it's the test it's going out into the wild literally with very minimal tools and seeing if you can fucking survive because waiting for all the planets to align I'm telling you it's never gonna happen it's never gonna fucking happen you know everyone says oh well, you know I just want to start a business when everything's great in my life and I have everything and I have, an al and I have a lot of money and I have a lot of time and everything's great and everything's perfect and I have a hot girlfriend and she's sucking my dick every day and I have a great house and I have everything and I have a great job then I want to start a business because it's not going to hurt me financially and it's just going to be something I can do in my free time and it's going to be easy I'm going to pick all the right programs to do all the right work for me and it's going to be so easy and so fast and uh, I'm going to be like Joe Rogan or PewDiePie or like whoever you know like no man like it, it, it's it's never going to be like that and and look if if you do get to that point like you're not going to have any incentive to start a business because your life is going to be fucking perfect so this is the real test the test is to leave everything you have behind or to trade everything you have for nothing but tools that will help you get the job done how invested are you in this guys you know are you willing to like sell everything you own and convert it into tools like for your job, for your house, and then again live in that said house, no matter how fucking ghetto it is. Last year we lived in a fucking place, man. We were paying a thousand bucks a month. We didn't even have our own door. We had to go in the front door of a fucking house. We had to walk down the fucking basement steps. Our door in the basement didn't even fucking close. It didn't have a lock on it. And for three months in the winter, we didn't even have a fucking bathroom. We didn't have a fucking sink in our place at all for five months. And for three months, we didn't have a bathroom. We had to use a fucking bathroom upstairs, a landlord's bathroom that was connected to their bedroom. And the bedroom bathroom door couldn't close properly. So when you got to take a fucking dump at like fucking 3 a.m. Or two dumps or three dumps. Who knows, man? It fucking happens. And, you know, like, fuck that, man. And, you know, we were pissing in jugs and everything. My room had no fucking insulation in it. We cooked all our meals on a wood stove. Uh, sorry, my room had insulation, but it had no walls over the insulation. And all my chainsaws were around my bed. And when we moved in there, I had about 10 bookshelves that were in my room. That the guy didn't fucking move out. And, you know, we moved them out ourselves, me and Mark. And it was a two-man job, and we, we made, like, fucking 10 trips to the fucking trailer. And we had to bring them to the backyard, like, in back of the property, and throw them in the fire pit. It was a fucking big fucking deal, man. We paid money to live there. And that was a mistake, but, like, after paying all that money to get so little, like, we would rather, and we built a cabin, too, and we basically, like, spent most of our time back there, you know, and, like, after spending so much money to receive so little, we realized what little we actually needed, and we don't need much, man, so why pay for it, and why pay for shit that you don't need, so decide what you need, what you don't need, and decide what you want, and then everything else doesn't fucking matter. Only your goal matters. And then when you achieve your goal, then you'll be able to get all the creature comforts that you're sacrificing now. And, you know, in the winter time, like, think, try to think of an alternate means to make money. Like, like what I do, okay? Like, okay, I kind of got boned this year, but a lot of it is my fucking fault. And I'm remedying that uh, as much as I can. So, like, and my website got its first click um, two days ago, actually, and it got its first click through Google. I was not able to find it through Google. I fucking tried, man, but someone fucking did, and, uh, yeah, they sent me a fucking email explaining it to me, and it comes with all these fucking analytical tools. You just have to learn how to use them, and they tell you where all your traffic's from, and uh, that's the other reason I didn't want to have a company build my fucking website for me because I asked them if they would edit my footage and put my footage together in pictures, and they said, yeah, sure. And I said, well, how will they know how to edit it? And they said, well, I had to tell them, or I had to edit it and send it to them. 
It's like, well, I already edit my footage. What the fuck am I going to pay you money for to send you footage that I've already edited? Again, like, it's like, yo, people have suggested this to me too, to have someone else, like, film my YouTube videos. It's like, why? Yo, Mark films my videos, or I film my own videos. Like, we're the filmers. Or to have someone else make my t-shirts for me. I make my own t-shirts. Like, would you tell a fucking artist to, like, have another artist paint his pictures for them? No. And it's purely subjective also. It's like, yo, it's fucking art, man. Like, let me do my own fucking art. So fuck off and suck a dick. So that's, like, the whole point of the fucking website. You know? It's to broaden the fucking pond. And not fish in the same fucking stagnant fucking waters all the time. And that's something you can fucking do. And you can do it at home. And, you know, I made uh, the other day. The last time I made money, actually. <laughs> it's fucking depressing. It's a... Uh, you know, it's like a week ago, a guy came by and uh, he bought two cords of firewood and I made 300 bucks and it took a few minutes, but, you know, I spent that 300 bucks on a new sign from my truck because my old sign had broken off and, you know, the website and uh, some sh and fixing the fucking wheel on my trailer. You know, it didn't go to like food, it didn't even go to fucking rent. <laughs> like, that's that's it you know a uh, hail mary because that's you know it's short term pain but in the long term you know it's uh it's going to get me out of this funk yeah and i'm fucking looking to fucking tighten the chain i'm going on the fucking wrong side <laughs> like a fucking idiot yeah i haven't used this saw in a long time so my dad's telling me how to do it turns out it's on the other side but anyway look man uh, if you guys are hustling in the winter and you don't know what to do like, I hope this video helps you. I hope it helps you in some fucking way. And, um... Join, man. Oh, good shit. So, more footage to come. Because I've got about half an hour left from this particular day. But, I'm gonna film some other stuff too. So, leave a thought in the comments downstairs. And, uh... Keep on keeping on. See you guys next time.